Hi there, everybody. I'm William Mosley, and you're watching the Permanent Rain Press. And you're about to see a very good interview with me and my co host here. So keep watching. Hi, everyone. It's Chloe with the Permanent Rain Press. And today I am so excited to be joined by William Mosley. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And thank you for having me on your show. It's an honor to be here. I'm so thrilled to be chatting with you um, a bit about Narnia later, but I'll start off with the question. Have you picked up any new hobbies or skills over the past year and a half? I was thinking about that today. Do you know what skills and hobbies I've picked up? Painting, fixing things, cleaning things, organizing things. You know, I really didn't do a lot of this before, but I... Um, I uh, have been spending a, quite a lot of time and now live back where I, I grew up, um, which is in the Cotswolds. Um, but the houses in the Cotswolds are not like houses that are built 20 or 30 years ago. They are houses that are built three or 400 years ago. So every time you seem to, you seem to turn around, there's something else is broken. Something else needs painting, something else needs fixing, something else needs hoovering or organizing or the gardens seem to grow at peculiar angles. Um, so, you know, it's all very quaint and beautiful, but it's also quite frustrating because you have to figure out how to fix something very quickly. So that's, I guess, what I've picked up over the last year and a half. A lot of housework. Tell me, what are some pieces of furniture that you've had to fix and put back together? Today, I have been, um, well, you know, God, I can't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you one of the things I do today, but... One of the one of the things I've done recently is I um, well you know the house that I'm I'm living in now uh, was my um, grandmother's house and um, it's a very beautiful old house it's from I don't know it's four hundred years old I think um, but she put down carpets in all of the rooms you know right you know she she carpeted everything when she first moved in in the seventies. And so I've been pulling all the all the rug all the carpets up, and I've been um. I'm finding these floorboards underneath that are from the 1700s. And then I've been washing them down and I've been scrubbing them out. And um, I've been making sure that they um that they look they look clean and, and they look and they look nice. So yeah, it's been fun. If you weren't an actor, could you now become a carpenter? Well, you know, whatever, whatever works, whatever works. I heard Daniel Day Lewis is very good at making tables, um, which is an incredible carpentry skill. So, sorry, wait, so um, if I could do something like that, then I'd be honored. You know, it's a, it's a very. I, I've learned that it's, it's very hard. You know, actually, uh, it's, you know, sanding and, and and finishing things is, it, you know, you sort of buy it in a shop. You go, oh, great, I'll just throw it at my house. But the amount of work that one person's gone into to make that that piece, you know, you. You, you can't un underestimate it until you've actually tried it. Like a new appreciation, right? Exactly, a new appreciation, exactly. Let's talk about your upcoming film, Saving Paradise. This is a story that is close to your writer, Van Bollett's heart, and his time as an investment banker. Tell me, what drew you to the script and the character of Michael Peterson? What drew me to the character of Michael Peterson in Saving Paradise was how real he felt, you know, he felt like um, somebody who you, who I, who I knew, he felt like a regular kind of guy. And in that sense, as soon as you read a character that you are like, oh, yeah, this feels like a real person, you instantly connect to it and you instantly connect to the story. And then when I got on set, I found out that the writer was this guy when he was younger. So um, it, it was, it proved to be, to be, to be true. And actually that, that really helped me a lot, um, having Van, but at the writer being, having lived the life of this character, because I got to kind of pick his mind a little bit about what it was like, what he went through, what experiences he had, what his emotions were like, what he felt, you know, and I, and I learned a lot from him. So um, that was a very, very uh, interesting film to make. And I also liked the um, American dream aspect of it, you know, like, we're all taught to make money. We're all taught to like, you know, at any price, make your life, make it happen, you know, do this, do that. And actually there is a price, you know, it's your own humanity that you have to question at the end of the day, your own moral compass that you have to come to terms with, you know, that there is no price on that. So I like that that was the kind of theme throughout the, uh, throughout the film. Tell me, how about working with your director, Jay Silverman, and, you know, watching him bring Van's story to life? 
Yeah, working with Jay Silverman was an absolute pleasure because he um, was very understanding to uh, to my process as an actor. You know, he always made sure that things were calm, things were easy, things were organized. I know that's, that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're having to remember, you know, four pages of dialogue, seven pages of dialogue, you've got a you know, big emotional scene at the end of the day and you're shooting a comedy scene in the morning, you know, having things organized and um, and calm, it just makes your job so much easier, you know? So I really appreciated Jay's professionalism and his understanding to make things work in a very efficient and um, very streamlined way so I could do my job instantaneously. I think uh, what they say is true, like it comes from the top down and it makes the right. actors feel comfortable. Uh, working with industry greats like Mimi Kennedy, Bill Cobbs, the remarkable Mary yeah. Pat Gleason, what did you learn from watching their talents firsthand? Mary Pat Gleason was an absolute legend. Oh, thank you, Ben. Thank you. Oh, my brother just bought me a very nice cup of tea. Very kind of him. <laughs> um, you have your own personal server. <laughs> no, trust me, I'm usually serving him tea. This will be the first time. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, when it's kind of on camera, right? So there's evidence of this happening. Exactly, exactly. Um, we're going on holiday tomorrow, so we're, you know, we're, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting connected. Which is good. Um, so working, you know, what was funny was working with Mary Clapp, Mary Pat Gleason specifically, she's, I think she'd done over a hundred films. And, um, you know, she's a very, very experienced actor. You know, she lived in Hollywood most of her life and I got to learn a lot just by talking to her on set. Um, and it was really sad when she died, you know, um, because this was, this was her last film. And I think the film, I, I mean, I heard the film's gonna be dedicated to her, which I think is true. And this is her last movie and, you know, um, People like her, they they only come around once, you know. So I was really honoured to work with her, to meet with her, to learn from her. Um, and she, you know, you know, she she was she was you know she was quite old and she was working long hours still. It was it was very impressive. And then obviously with Bill Cobbs, he's uh you know he's worked with every director out there, every single director, and he's continuing to work with you know just a a a list actors. So I. I was I was honoured to uh, sit opposite him, you know, and 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 to look into his eyes and, and to be part of a scene with him. Um, so yeah, I each of those actors, um, and who was the other actor you mentioned? Mimi. Uh, Mimi Kennedy. Yeah, she's she's brilliant, and she works um, uh, on a sitcom. I think she's very very successful. On, is it called Mothers? Um, but it's extremely successful. She's very very successful. So. I knew I had to be sharp with each of these actors. I knew I had to know what I was doing. I had to be on my game. I could not drop the ball. Um, Cause they sort of, you know, if you drop the ball and you're the lead actor, they sort of, they sort of give like a side look, like this guy know what he's doing. So I had to really be on it. Um, so I was, I was on it, yeah. I love what you mentioned there. It's like, there's so much pressure um, on you just because you yeah. want to make sure that they, they consider yourself, um, you and equal. And I'm sure they did. Uh, I'm really yeah. looking forward to seeing this film. Johanna yeah. Brady stars uh, opposite you as Michael's love interest, Charlie. What was it like having her as a scene partner? Yeah, you know, um, there's not many times it comes along when you meet somebody who, um, who really gets your sense of humor and you really get their sense of humor. And I think a lot of chemistry is built on humor. So, you know, we had this, because we could laugh together, we'd have a laugh, we instantly, I feel like had chemistry on camera. And so, you know, sometimes you have to work at chemistry and sometimes you don't. If you can, if you can have a laugh, if you can, you know, see a spark in someone's eyes from like a joke or they, or they say a joke and there's a spark in your eyes, then you can bring that to your scene. And um, so I really enjoy working with her and, um, you know, she's obviously like a seasoned pro. So uh, I felt like I was I was in good hands. You know, I felt like I could relax with her. I felt like I could just be myself and work and, and there was no judgment or no, you know, kind of like um, no. And there was like, you know, no room to play. Like we had a lot of room to play, which was great. What can you tease about their relationship between Michael and Charlie? Because I know at the beginning of the film, they're obviously uh, different mindsets, kind of different points in, in their life. Yeah, you know, um, the relationship between our characters um, is one that um, is one that grows. You know, I think, there's, well, there's a great line, isn't there? And um, uh, something's got to give when Jack Nicholson says... Uh, um, to Helen Hunt, he says, um, 
you make me want to be a better man. You know, that's like one of the most famous lines. I don't know, I can't remember who wrote it with Mike Nichols or someone like that. But yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an epic line, right? And I think uh, every man feels like that. The, you know, this woman makes him want to be a better person, a better man. And so that's exactly, um, you know, what uh, Charlie does for uh, Michael in the, in, the, in the movie. Makes him a better person. So yeah, that was a, that was a good kind of catalyst for his change. We'll get to experience that journey. You mentioned American Dream, American Worker. This was filmed out in Los Angeles. So how was that small town feel achieved on set? Yeah, you know, um, I was very fortunate that I've traveled a lot of America. I've seen a lot of small towns. Um, I've been through the South. And I've been through um, a lot of lot of different states. I've shot a lot of different states. So I know the small town feel. I come from a small town myself, so I, I can relate. In order to create that on camera, I think it was really um, that you just let the other actors do their work, you know, because essentially they're the ones creating, um, they're the ones creating that that energy, you know, they're the ones creating the village, you know, or the um, small town feel, and, and you just kind of let them work, you know, and you just take the, what it, it take in what they're giving you that energy, so. Um, for me, that was quite straight, straightforward, actually. And that being said, I'm sure they did a phenomenal job. If you were able to to feel transported and inspired as an actor, uh, thematically about community, soul, the effects of a corporate takeover in a small town. Uh, you briefly touched on this earlier, but what do you hope viewers feel and take away from this movie as a whole? For me, I hope viewers say from this movie that it's it's a it, it's a bit like it's a wonderful life, you know. It's a it's a it's a moral compass kind of story, and it's about somebody finding themselves and changing on the way. And it's really about um, what matters to you most as a person. You know, we live in a very um, capitalist society. I think now more than ever, as I'm sure you're aware, and we all feel the pressures of that. You know, you get on social media. Well, people aren't going to be posting about you know their dead end life you know or their dead end thing it's like people are posting about how much money they've got how much wealth they've accumulated how successful they are how important they are you know how they are this how they are that how they can you know and and then that makes other people one idolize them you know and I, i'm not gonna like you know say what but in the in the bible it you know obviously says don't have false idols you know that's one of the most important things that the bible talks about don't have false idols right um because they will let you down because they're not real like you know so people idolize this this um this kind of this 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 wealth this kind of capitalist dream um and then and then on the other side of it it makes people feel really bad about themselves you know so it's like well i don't have that i don't have that one person has. i don't have that so that makes you feel bad so then people probably go out and do bad things to try to accumulate that or they live unhappily you know um so you know i hope the film has that kind of moral thing where it's like well you know this guy has this guy coming into this small town supposedly has everything he has the car he has the apartment in new york he has the big job he has the respect of everybody he's got what everybody wants right but he doesn't have much of a heart he doesn't have much of an emotional um emotional understanding of the world at all you know um and i just hope people take that away from it you know i you know the most important thing we have right now is taking care of our planet you know that is our biggest thing and that's what we should all be thinking about and even if you just go for a walk in nature that's that's very important you know taking care of the small things I'm really just taking a step back and thinking about what's important to you and in your life. I'm really excited for these themes to shine through. Another project that you recently wrapped was the thriller On the Line out in Paris with Mel right. Gibson, Kevin yeah. Dillon. Tell me a bit about that one and what it's been like for you filming during a pandemic. Filming parent during a pandemic is tough. Getting to France was tough for me. And I, um, I was very lucky at the board that the guys sort of just saw this random video on my phone of somebody climbing something. And the guy was like, OK, this is a funny video. You can come in. I was like, thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, working with Val Gibson was like was a bit was a bit like pinch me kind of thing. Um, I've always looked up to Mel and 
you know, when I was a kid, I used to skive off school pretending I was ill and I would just watch like lethal weapons back to back, you know, I'd watch one, two and three and I loved them. Um, I loved Mel Gibson when I was younger. And then, you know, I loved Braveheart. Like when I made the Narnia films, like obviously like, it's kind of in my mind. Like, I wonder if I could ever make something like Braveheart. And I, I don't know if, you know, obviously like I, I haven't done anything like Braveheart, but um, you know, just to have like a tinge of it was, was, was cool. And, you know, Mel, um, the great thing about Mel is he's not like a superstar kind of guy, you know, he's very down to earth, you know, for somebody who's, God, he's done everything imaginable, you know, he's very real, he's very down to earth, you know, you meet people who are a hundred as successful as him and they've got more attitude than he has, you know, he doesn't have an attitude. And he doesn't show up late and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't mess people around. Like he doesn't demand anything. So it was very refreshing. And it gave me a lot of confidence uh, in myself when I, after working with him. So that was, that was good. And you mentioned that you have another project upcoming. What can you share? Yeah, you know, I have, um, I'm very fortunate that I've just, I've, I've got a couple of projects coming up. One that's been pushed back. I'm meant to be playing David Crockett in a movie, um, in a kind of, um, like a kind of Taken style biopic of, of David Crockett's uh, portion of his life, which is which I love the script for. I think we're gonna go in November in uh, in Tennessee. It could be pushed a little bit, but the script's great, it's fun. Um, before that, I'm supposed to be playing Edgar Allan Poe in a sort of gothic, uh, kind of like a bit of a gothic kind of scary movie. It's quite fun. And I think audience would love it. It's, it's quite cool. It's when he was at West Point when he was young, um, which is which is all true. So you know, and it's called Ravens Hollow, which um, which I love the title of. And I'm excited to make the film. It's gonna be a lot of blues and greys and blacks and a lot of smoke and a lot of it'll be fun. And before that, I'm about to go to Venice, the Venice Film Festival, because I have a film there um, that's premiering called um, Land of Dreams which I shot with um, the Iranian visual artist Shireen Nishat and her husband Shoja Azai. And um, that was a wonderful experience. And we shot that in New Mexico. So it was very like, you know, really out there in the, in, in the, in the open land. Um, and Matt Dillon's in that one. Um, and I recently just worked with his brother, Kevin Dillon. So I've worked with both Dillon brothers back to that, which is, it's funny because you never know what, you know, which brothers, what, what they're going to be like, but they're actually both, incredibly giving people so you know there's nothing kind of starry about them they're very just down to earth Matt used to call me up at night and be like hey you're on your own at the hotel man how you doing you okay you're not you're not feeling too too isolated you're not you're not you're not homesick I'm like man that is so nice of you to call up but actually I'm fine that's very funny yeah, but he's <laughs> checking in on you like you need someone yeah. to check in yeah. on you yeah he was checking in on me no one's ever checked in on me before in any movie so that was very nice um but yeah, it's all good. It's been fun. Should be nice to go back to a film festival. Haven't been to one of those in a long time. That's true. I just had to fill out a big form today um, about all the specifications that they have for the festival. Um, I'm going to take my mum along because it'll give her a nice break to get out of England for a little while and just to see Venice. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to go to the Venice Film Festival. It's the oldest film festival in, in the world and it's very famous and be very, it'll be very glamorous. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. You've been in the film and TV industry for over 15 years now. Uh, when you look back, is it still surreal to have been a part of so many beloved projects and played so many different characters? I don't think about it to be honest, sometimes. I sometimes people say that to you. I'm like, I don't know. You just sort of roll with it. Do you know what I mean? Like you just you work hard, you try, and then you get a job, and then you roll with it, and you do this and you do that one, and you just I only ever did this job because it was fun. I just I never I never could see myself doing something else. I was like, I was a kid, I was like, I auditioned for something, and uh and they made us audition. I was auditioning my brother and my sister for this little TV movie. I just thought it was so fun. I just said to my mom, I was like, you know, you can have fun for the rest of your life. She was like, yeah. I was like, well, I want to be an actor then. <laughs> so um, my parents were luckily very supportive and it's all kind of like, uh, all kind of worked out. You know, there's a lot to do with a casting director called Pippa Hall who cast me 
tried to cast me in my first TV movie and then ended up casting me in Narnia. So, you know, it was all really because of her. Um, so, I, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful I've got to live this, live this journey. And you mentioned you're taking your mom to the film festival. Do you ever talk about it with your family? Like these people have been with you since the very beginning. They've seen you grow and thrive in the public eye. So it's nice to share these moments with them. Absolutely. You know, um, it's 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 twi- it's it, it it's really only good when you can share with someone. You know, like when you do it on your own, it's one thing, but it's always better to share it. You know, it's always more fun. To like have somebody else there, you can sort of go like, isn't this mad? Like, isn't this mental? Like, this is cool. Like, oh my God, we're here. You know, this is cool. You know, I used to get on the train with my mom and go up to London for a 10 minute audition and then get on the train back and we would never hear anything. And, and you know, things have, have, you know, things aren't always like how you imagine them to be or always perfect. But as long as you can have fun and enjoy it and make the most of it, then then it's a laugh you know I even used to like going up for 10 minutes to the audition like skip school for a day you know I thought that was great so you know from, from the beginning I, I've enjoyed it and I just hope I continue to enjoy it continue to enjoy the process and continue to like you know put good messages out there make good films t- the things I'm proud of you know things that I'm you know passionate about and things that sort of take people you know in into like another world for a bit you know a bit of bit of fun and that's what fuels people as artists, right? Otherwise, you'd be doing something else. An integral yeah. part early in your career, of course, the Chronicles of Narnia film series, where you star as Peter Pevensey. Looking back at those three films, but mostly the first two, what was your all-time favorite scene to be a part of? It's a very easy question. It was just, it was the battle scene in the first movie. You know, it was a, it was a mad moment. It was extraordinary. And so getting to do that and seeing that back on camera because you know what's funny is when you shoot these scenes yeah you know, they feel fun like galloping horse across a battlefield it was awesome but it's very basic really you know it's just a camera on the back of a truck with a couple of guys holding the camera and you're just you know following the camera along and then you just pull off but then of course when you see the film it it looks it's like um it's like there's hundreds of people around, you know, like all these animals and things. You're like, God, how, how do they do that? You know? So for me, that was a way, that was a fun one. That was, that was pretty cool. There's a bit of movie magic. Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of my personal favorites to get some behind sure. the scenes insight or commentary into them. Uh, Line the Witch, the Wardrobe, the ceremony, the coronation ceremony at the end of the film. Uh, it was just such a beautiful scene and with the Narnia theme song playing in the background, do you have fond memories of that one? Yeah, I think actually they had the score written before, oh, maybe when the movie was being shot. So I think they played that while we were walking down the down that that, that coronation thing. So that was pretty cool. We shot that. Most of, most of the movie was shot in chronological order, but that, that scene, because we had to be in the studio, was shot before we did the battle scenes and all the outdoor sequences because we had to go to the south island for that so yeah it was a really fun fun scene to shoot and like uh it was quite epic andrew was trying to get me to smile i couldn't smile on camera and so i they sort of like did something funny and then they made me smile and they ended up using some random shots so you know it all worked out fine which was good sorry did you say they couldn't get you to smile couldn't get me to smile couldn't get me to smile. I couldn't get. I couldn't smile on camera. I could cry on camera, but I couldn't smile on camera. I felt so awkward. I felt so uncomfortable. I felt so faint. I mean, that so, was yeah. like your first film, right? So yeah. there might have been a little, yeah. a little bit of like this. Uh, yeah, I can't was, fully. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I couldn't express fully all relax. the emotions. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And then a few years later, Prince Caspian, which I think we right. saw more range of emotions, more character development uh, right. with you. And the scene that always makes me cry every time I watch it is when the Narnian storm, they raid the castle, half of them can't get out, the gate closes. Yeah, You're yeah. front and center there. What was it like bet- for that one and, and filming it? Yeah, that was epic. You know, um... Andrew wrote a scene, well, it's all the stunts, but Andrew wrote a scene where I had to jump on the horse and get out of the castle. And um, I remember, like, I was really nervous, actually, before I did things. I only had a week to, to prepare the vault onto the horse. But it, it worked fine. They gave me seven takes. I wanted to do it in one take, but I did it in a split of two takes. Um, but it worked fine in the end. The emotional scene at the end of that, I'd worked on with an acting coach in New York 
Cup six months prior. So I was very prepared to go into it. Ben Barnes did an excellent job in that scene. Um, so it's easy to work with him. And, you know, I think Andrew was very clever with that movie because he put the rivalry of the two boys against each other. You know, the, the, the ego of the, of, of the two young men, they, had, they still had a long way to go to become good leaders. You know, they were, they were good men, but they weren't really good leaders yet. So they had to learn to be good leaders. Um, yeah, I'm, I, you know, I'm really proud of that movie. Like, you know, I don't know if it, it isn't like, I guess, a classic maybe like The Lion, the Rich and Wardrobe is, but to me, it's a very, a very powerful movie in, this, in the same way. I definitely think it's a classic, at least That's for right, me. Thank you. That's and right, yeah, right. you mentioned the whole egos, like watching Caspian and and Peter duel throughout the whole movie. Um, exactly. Who takes the guilt, who takes the blame. Um, I thought it was really well done. And of course, getting to see you in a cameo in the third movie kind of put that ribbon on the present. I know you get asked a lot about uh, uh, what's up next for Narnia. You've said you don't know. Hopefully Netflix does do that adaptation of The Silver chair i'm sure people would like to see it netflix own the rights to narnia now um so they are in full control and whatever they want to do they will do i hope they make it you know and i hope that they do something powerful with it i hope that they they really go for it you know it's a it's a it's a beautiful world to to have uh, to have rain over so i'm looking forward to seeing what they do the Pevensey siblings will always be my favorite film siblings. Of course, Prince Caspian, honorable, um, honorary brother. Uh, tell me about your relationship with Skandar, Anna, Georgie, and Ben today. Well, you know, we're all about to see each other very soon. Um, yeah, very funny, because Anna's just had a baby. So we're all going to see each other on the 31st of August. Yeah. Is that all of you? So all five yeah. of you? I don't think Ben will be able to. Because uh, he's in LA, but the four of us will. Will there be photos somewhere? So you and Georgie are the two with Instagram, public Instagrams. That's right. That's right. Maybe there'll be photos. We'll see. You know, Anna's very protected. Anna doesn't like it. So I understand that. But, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. That is so special and sweet. And I love that you are still all like siblings in real life. It must be so nice to to do these catch-ups because you did have reunion dinners prior to the pandemic and then um, you Anna and Georgie did prop culture which aired last year so what was that like to kind of return to Narnia and be talking about these set artifacts it was fun you know I uh I think god I gotta get a hold of this shield somehow how can I uh see if this guy convinced this guy to set me the shield (laughs) um but, that was the motivation uh, to return and yeah. like I just want to hold the shield again. Exactly. You know, I, I was yeah, the shield was pretty cool actually. I was like, oh, I forgot about this thing. So yeah, no, it was great. It was, it was a lot of fun just to just to get on um, memory lane. And Scander, unfortunately, MIA, but as we all know, he stepped away from acting. He's a political yeah. advisor now, right? That's right. He's a political advisor. It must yeah. be insane. Like you're like, oh my little brother's a, a political advisor now. My on-screen little brother is now semi, semi-running the government. But yeah, it's a little horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> we must be able to make for good table talk, good reunions. Um, so many yeah. fans who have been with you since 2005, followed your career, um, and continue to run fan sites and provide Narnia updates. What is that love and support meant to you? Yeah, it's amazing. You know, um, I, I, I never, I didn't know the films were going to be as, as successful as they were or as meaningful to people as they were. And so clearly it's uh, it's had long lasting um, power with people, a long lasting impact. And I'm very grateful to the fans. You know, we we don't make films without the fans. You know, you know, people always think, well, the director's the most important person, the casting director, the studio head, the, you know, the guy that owns the studio, you know, the guy that bought the studio. You know, it's like, no, you know, it's like the regular people on the street, you know, it's the normal people who are just doing their day-to-day lives. They dictate your career. They dictate your life. They are the ones who, you know, you, you, you honor, you know, first and foremost. So I, I really do appreciate them and, and I thank them, you know, entirely. So now it's time to play a game. It's called Throwback Trivia. How it works is I'm going to be asking you questions that you've been asked in past interviews or related to moments in your career. And it's basically a test of how good your memory is. 
Okay. Are you ready to play? It's out of six. Okay. E Red Carpet 2016. What American food did you say you want to have with tea? McDonald's. Is it McDonald's? You get one final answer. Do, is, are you going with McDonald's? One I said on the E Red Carpet, I said I wanted to have something with tea. I, it was, I, I think you... it was like a sit down interview. Oh, okay. I probably would have been um, a chocolate digestive. Is that your final answer? Yes. Wrong. You said umami burger. Oh, God. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you were closer with the first one, but it's I funny because Elizabeth and Alex were there and they had no idea what you were talking about. But you were really? like, umami. Well, it's a brand. It's a chain. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, the Meredith Vieira Show 2015. You were asked, what is Elizabeth Hurley's best body part? And you answered with what? God, her eyes, I hope. I hope. Wrong. It's you said a beautiful smile. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm not very You're good. You were put at on the spot there. So the, the smile yeah, was what? a really good one at the time. Uh, People good. magazine 2015. What would you keep in your post-apocalyptic go bag? God, I can't remember any of these. Um mobile phone. Oh my you said keys to a helicopter, and this is a direct quote, which would get me the hell out of there. <laughs> there does this sound like something you would say? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Actually. At New York Comic Con 2008, what word did you use at the panel? And Peter Dinklage told you that it was a word from the 80s. Rad? Radical? Final answer. Final answer. Use it was gnarly. <laughs> you used it to describe the fun action sequences. <laughs> you're over. Oh. You're over four right now. Let's see if you can get on the board. Um, I can't. I can't. I don't know any of these. <laughs> you know more than me about me. <laughs> Narniafans.com, two thousand and six. You might be able to guess this one. What okay. shampoo did you say you used at the time? Pantene. No. I'll give oh you a second God. guess. Head and shoulders. I'm just dying of miserable death. <laughs> you said at the moment I'm using Tresemme. It's good oh stuff. Oh my God. This this is weird that you know all this stuff. This no, crazy. I did do research. I did do did? some research. Okay. I went into the archives purposely. Okay. Um, and okay, I, I'm confident in this one. You presented at the BAFTAs in 2006. Who did you present with and for okay, what thank category? You. Finally, I know this answer. That was Rupert Grin and it was the best editing. Yes. <laughs> You are one. one for six, but you one. are on the one. board. I, I'm, I'm good, thinking thanks. the BAFTAs is something that you really don't forget, being at the ceremony, getting to present on stage. No, no, you don't. You don't. You know. And that's a crossover that everyone wanted, Harry Potter and Narnia. Too bad that's nothing else happened. I feel like that was probably one of the only crossovers between cast that, that probably ever happened. I don't know. Was he's cool? He's a cool guy. I liked him. He was he's 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 down to earth. And I think that's important, especially as people like thrive in in their careers. I can tell you are very down to earth. Um, that leads me to my final question for you: our signature yeah. one. If you could be any ice cream flavor, which would you be, and why? That's a great question. I think I think mint choc chip. Because you just don't assume that they would go together, but they do. They're just so, it's so good. You know, like mint chocolate chip, you think mint, you're like, uh, with chocolate chips, this, this isn't going to work. But it just does. It's just amazing. <laughs> awesome. I love that answer. Thank you, William, so much for taking the time to chat. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye. I send you my love, my, my best wishes. I hope you have a great uh, rest of your summer. Enjoy it, you know, and I hope you get out to Whistler at some point and have some fun.
For those who don't know, Whistler is a mountain up in Vancouver where we are based. Yeah. William has been in the past. Uh, hopefully you get to go again in the future. Uh, but for all those watching, make sure to catch William in Saving Paradise. It is out in select theaters and on demand September 3rd. And we will see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.